All right, hi Exploring Expresso fans, Mike here. Got Lisa behind the camera today, and we are out at Overland Attic in Nixa, Missouri. We came out here today to speak specifically to Mike from Twain Trailers. So Mike is the owner yep. of Twain Trailers, um, based out of Ozark, Missouri. Yes. Uh, and he has a couple of trailers here on um, display at Overland Attic here in, in Nixa. So, what? A few years ago, you decided to create your own Overland trailer. Mm -hmm. What did you see lacking in the industry to make you want to do that? That seemed like a pretty good task to take on. Um, initially, uh, my wife and I, with our family, got involved in camping with our Jeep. We yep. had a rooftop tent on top of our Jeep. Correct. Um, we were super stoked, went through the process of building out the suspension, made sure that everything was just perfect, got the perfect hoop structure, got everything put together. And we went out on the trail for the first time and we got tent, the tent all set up, camp was all set. Uh, the kids were like, okay, where are the marshmallows? You can't move your camp once you've set up whenever your tent is on top of your Jeep. That's right. We had to pack everything up. Yeah. and drive into town, grab some marshmallows, come back so we could have s'mores. That was the whole thing. And it, like the first time that happened, I was like, man, I can't believe that just happened. And I thought to myself over and over and over, how can I avoid this? How can I avoid this? And there were a couple other issues that came up with having the tent on top of your vehicle. You have to find a perfectly level camping spot. Correct. Because you're, unless you have a vehicle that auto levels, which most Jeeps don't, um, you're not going to be sleeping on a level surface because you're stuck with your jeep's parking like spot on top of that every time you shift in your jeep your suspension is designed to soften movement it, right exactly so when you move it still moves yeah, it moves as well right yeah. so everything yeah. that you do on top of a jeep with a high center of gravity is amplified yep so everything is just sort of weird so i just kept thinking through it thinking through it okay whatever i can't even park my jeep in the garage anymore I've got no. this brick on top of my Jeep, and I'm like, I've got my awesome Jeep that I've built out, I've got this awesome tent that I bought, and it has to sit in the sun all day, which is the number one way that destroys all of my gear. Right. I gotta get this off my car. So I did. But in that process of trying to find what I was gonna put it on, I looked at every single trailer that was just meant for hauling a tent around in the marketplace, and all I could find were either flat pack, shipped to you, bolt together trailers, that they want eight thousand dollars for yeah and you bolt it together and unless you loctite everything with red loctite and pray that things don't shear it's still going to come apart right like when you're on a trail with an off-road trailer it's going to come apart it's going to get beat around bolt together doesn't work and then whenever you start looking at the lowest level tiers of what's available for just a welded trailer at the time whenever we built this the entry point was like a, one of those competitors that has a $15,000 entry level trailer without a tent. I looked at it and I was like, okay, what would it take for me to build a trailer that I could actually have it be the price point set low enough to where I could get somebody to get a trailer and a tent for less than the cost of that guy's trailer. Right. Yes. And that was my goal. And I didn't realize how much wiggle room there was because this is actually um, my third like we had two prototypes before this. This is the finalized design from 2020. And then the one that we manufacture now, main difference is, is we've got even thicker fenders on it so anyone can stand on them. Um, and a two inch receiver hitch on the back on every single trailer. We, this was an option without the receiver hitch okay. in 2020. Now we only make them with the receiver hitch. But And, and so is this Mark One? This is the Mark One, okay. but now the Mark One, there's only the Mark One. Okay. We're developing another trailer that is meant to be for you to be able to haul your side by side to the woods, okay. back your side by side off of it, okay. hook it up to the trailer, and then go deeper in the woods. Got it. But okay. that was a very complex design for a single axle and making sure everything's safe, so we're really going slow on that. Okay. But we've eliminated, we used to have a Mark One and a Mark Two, and the main difference was having the receiver hitch on the back. Oh, got it, okay. But we eliminated this, the separate models and just said for, for the amount of effort and cost that it is to put a receiver hitch on it, and especially with the change in the price of materials, we're like, we're just gonna make them all with a receiver hitch. That way, okay. if somebody doesn't want it, they don't have to use it. Right, right. Um, but getting back to where we were with the expense of it, I went, went through and built the first prototype, and the prototype cost me like almost $5,500 just in parts and labor and like all this other stuff to get it all put together. And 
it was in that process I looked at it and I was like, okay, so now I'm going to go back to these suppliers that I bought these parts from as a person who's now looking at it as a business as opposed to just a customer. And I saw that there was enough room in the cost of the parts that I had purchased that I could actually manufacture these trailers and sell them to people for about the cost of what it cost me to build my first one. Right. Um, some of the most important changes that we made from the first prototype to this final prototype is our hoop structure can be just lifted off. You pull these four farm pins and then the okay. whole hoop structure just lifts off and sets to the side. So okay. if you ever need just a flatbed trailer to haul stuff, it's there. It's there. Right. Because the whole goal of this trailer was to be a trailer that you could use the other 50 weeks out of the year that you're not camping. Um, most of us, if we're lucky, get to spend about two weeks in the woods. Yeah. The rest of the time, we've got a lot of chores that need to be done, and at least in my world. And I wanted to design a trailer that could not only be parked in my garage. Um, at the time we designed this, I had a three-car garage. So we had Jeep, truck, and then trailer. And the goal was to keep everything inside, out of the sun, and have it be practical and useful year-round. Because I couldn't, I couldn't justify the idea of spending $15,000 on a trailer yeah. that I could only use to camp with and well they're amazing trailers oh, all yeah. the competitors make amazing yeah, trailers yeah, I've, I've seen them but I just needed something that was more practical right. in my life yeah so that's what brought us to here and we like water sports you can't haul kayaks and canoes on a lot of those other competitor trailers because they've dedicated more space to the toolboxes and everything correct we left this open as much as possible so that if you wanted to put J-hooks on the floor, you can just mount a couple of kayaks on the bottom. If you want to put J-hooks on the side, you can carry kayaks on the sides, on the top, on the bottom. You can lay a raft over the top of your tent whenever it's collapsed. Like there's, The whole point of this was to leave it as open for as many options as possible so everyone could design what they wanted to do with the trailer for their weekend lifestyle. Right. So... So, and this, um, and when somebody orders from you, because you can order from you, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, I did read you can order whatever color, or call them at your vehicle, right? You can. Um, so, Brutus would be, you know, have to have a red one. Right. And that right. would be easy. Right. Um, there's, I mean, just whatever the cost of the difference is in the powder coat and right. the extra time to run. I mean, it's negligible if that's what you prefer. It's worth the upcharge. But we're stuck with, we can... 98% color match all colors out there. It just, a powder coat doesn't look the same on a frame as what a paint does. So right, if you've got a painted yeah. vehicle, right. it's gonna always have a, a shade difference, but we can definitely make red look red right. and match reds as right. best as possible. Uh, so tell us about the wheels, because I did read on the site that um, you can match the bolt pattern yes. to the bolt pattern that the year Jeep I have. So we currently have um, three different axles. This one is a 4.5 by five, which would allow you to match any TJ, a lot of different Lexus vehicles for your bolt pattern. So you could bolt your existing wheel and tire package directly on the trailer so you never have to carry a spare for your vehicle or for the trailer. So because they're all interchangeable. Yeah. Right, one, one spare, spare for the whole thing. Yeah. Um, we also have the five, five, five by five bolt pattern for um, your basically basic Jeep JKs, JTs, all the current Jeep production right. line. And then um, we do have a six by, I think it's 144, which is the Silverado bolt pattern but we can also adapt that down to we just did one the other day for a Chevy Colorado okay. um, and adapt that down to six by I think 120 for those bolt patterns right um, with those five axles that we use with the specific hubs we can basically adapt to anybody's wheel and tire package um, one of the challenges that we have run into with adapting um, other people's wheels and tires is sometimes you guys have some really big wheels and tires. Yeah. So um, <laughs> when it comes yeah. to putting your specific wheel and tire package on the trailer, that's going to require additional lead time. Right. And the cost is going to be determined based on how many alterations we have to make to the trailer to make that wheel and tire package effective. Because if you try to put 40s on this trailer, it's going to be noticeable. And we actually have to use completely different fenders. Well, of course, we have to yeah. change the spacing on the protective hoops. Like everything has to change on the external part of the structure. The right. Axles are the same, but right. everything else from there is different. It's changed after that. So um, tell us a little bit about the hoops. Um, I saw on your website you talked about the hoops. And can we stand on those? Oh, yeah, yeah. You well, can they, stand on take, basically anything weight. here. Okay. The whole point is, is this little window that you have on your tent that yeah. nobody uses for anything, you yeah. can actually use it as an easier access point than the ladder. Right. My feet hurt every time I climb the ladder. Right. So I always come up this side and just climb in this way because you're actually right here able to dive in without any issue. Right. Um, 
these these hoops are we call them tree rubbers in okay. Missouri we go camping out in Mark Twain National Forest so our trails are narrow yep. with lots of trees we're not fighting boulders so much like in Colorado right but we're fighting trees if you get too close or like lopsided on the trail I didn't want the fenders to get mashed into the tires and you get a flat so this is just solid steel um, and basically if it hits a tree, it's gonna push the whole trailer out of the way and you're not gonna damage your fenders and you're just gonna keep going down the trail. And that was the intent, right. forwards or backwards. So Okay, um, also you, you mentioned a little bit ago about on when you had your rooftop on top of the Jeep and you get inside that and then you, you shuffle around and you, you feel all that. So you've got a solution. Right. for that with this setup so so we put a jack yep. um, a pipe mount jack on each corner of the trailer four corners you get four jacks with each trailer um, there's also a, another mounting point that if you just want to keep it in the garage you've got a fifth mounting point to where you just take one of these jacks and just put it in the garage put with the, the, garage the lead there. okay but the whole point of that is is that you can level the trailer at any campsite so the the jacks can be set at individual heights so you can actually just take a level with you and level the trailer as you're doing your setup which is actually really quick and easy surprisingly yeah. um and then you've got a perfectly level platform and i always jack mine up to the maximum height they've got a 15 inch uh, travel vertically okay that allows me to walk like that right now he doesn't have this lifted up as high but I can walk underneath my annex without stooping so oh, right. I'm okay. under here this is actually now a full additional room that when we set it up it just feels like an, a whole additional living space right um, and so again with the current setup that you have here if you, you went to the full height of these it gives you enough room yeah and i'm five nine so underneath. so somebody between probably at least six foot could probably walk under there yeah. fairly easily yes right yes. okay which makes it kind of nice and again if once you put your annex on around you know the zip it on mm -hmm. then you've got another you've got a basement <laughs> right and and additionally with that because they're jacks, they're static. So whenever you're up in the tent, the tent doesn't move. Like there's right. no shifting, there's no flexing. You're not relying on the axle or the wheels or the, the leaf suspension at all to give any kind of stability to the tent being set up. And if at any point you feel like you want even more stability in it, than what the trailer has inherently by design, once you drop the outrigger of the, the side ladder it becomes even more stable and if you really had to you could even start tying off all these different points that you have all over your tent you could secure it to the ground if you want to and you'd be good prob i mean through a windstorm sure um so you, you could make it really stable and the main thing about all of that that makes it possible and worthwhile and even reasonable to think about is that you don't have to worry about setting everything up and then having to break it down because you wanted to move five feet. Right. Once you set it up, you can actually drive off, go to your trailhead, do your camping, do your hiking. You can go drop your kayaks in the river, wherever you are, throw them on your Jeep, whatever. Um, you don't have to worry about constantly moving your entire camp with you throughout the day. Right. So you can right. set it, forget it, come back to it. Everything is golden, honky-dory. Yeah. Um, and then also I did notice it does have the articulating hitch. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's, so it's, it's called the lock and roll hitch. It's pretty right. standard um, for most people who are making off-road trailers now. You've got 180 degrees of swing and with the receiver hitch that's on your vehicle, that's what gives you the, the 90 degrees of drop and rise. Right. And um, also it gives you 360 degrees of twist. Basically, if you get to a point where you have bound up your hitch in any way shape or form you've already you're already in more trouble than you can right. ever yeah like you're not going to get out of that with your vehicle right 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 um one person at one of the trade shows came up and asked about you know what about having a torsion bar running down the center of the trailer to increase stability all that other stuff and he was in trailer manufacturing uh, okay. and i kind of had to point out the fact that when you have 360 degrees of twist coming off the hitch you're not actually able to control any kind of torsion going down the length of the trailer no. because you're already free here. Right. So there's there's no value in that. Right. Um, one trailer design that we're working on that might become another Mark II is some people have requested that we have this central pipe run the full length of the trailer so that the rear hitch could actually be a tow point as well. Oh, okay. So if you were going down a trail and somebody else got snagged up behind you, right. you could actually, you know, chain to that and hook to them and pull them out because right now it wouldn't be wise to do that yeah, it's just it meant to be like a bike hauler right right so um, simple things yeah. and that's one of those things that we've talked about doing in the future but 
And then I think one of the things I, um, I saw on your site as well, there's, there's some things you can add to it. You can add uh, like rotopacks, mounts, mm -hmm. and you can add mounts for your high lift jack and there's mounts you can add to it. Right. Um, but once a guy had this, I mean, you could pretty much customize it any way you want. Exactly. Uh, if you're like me, that I'm not hauling around four wheelers and kayaks and things like that, I'm camping. So what I would might do is add, you know, a cook stove to it, maybe mm -hmm. a drawer system that could slide in and out. Um, that I could use, you know, from a camp stove and things like that. I'm Absolutely, saying, I could fully customize it myself once I got it home. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm with you. Um, I've I've looked at rooftop tents. My neighbor has a rooftop tent, and his biggest complaint is when he goes someplace if he has if he forgot the marshmallows, right? He's got to pack it all back up and then go get the marshmallows. And uh, I've helped him numerous times take that thing off the top of his Jeep mm -hmm. and store it in the garage. And it, it's, it's a little little hassle, kind of a pain. Uh, we've been looking at trailers as we go along um, because I think that's where we're headed to right. instead of doing anything rooftop. Uh, and if you're driving in this area or in, in um, the Ozarks a little bit uh, further south from here in, in Arkansas, uh, we did a trail. I had a basket on that that I had to take off because it was too tall. Mm -hmm. So if I had a rooftop tent on it, it's not coming off. Right. I could take it off, but I can't put it in the back of my Jeep. I'd have to take it off, put it back on, and all that hassle. So um, we yeah. experienced that. So I, I kind of know, and this is a, um, a pretty sweet setup, uh, I think, for it. Um, Another thing I'll throw out there, uh, one of the inspirations for this was our first trip out to Colorado after we had our rooftop tent. Um, we camped out there with it on top of our Jeep. That was like our second or third thing. Um, the Jeep couldn't go faster than 90 miles an hour with that brick on top of it. Right. Like I couldn't go on I-70 at the rate that everybody else was driving. Yeah. Um, and we, I think, averaged nine miles to the gallon for gas. Yeah. The next year we did the exact same trip again with the tent on top of my first prototype trailer. Mm -hmm. We got 14 miles to the gallon with gas because the tent was sitting down below the profile of the Jeep itself. Right. So the air dam that the Jeep is, Jeep is already had broken all of the air out of the way. So we weren't fighting that. And we were able to keep up with traffic without issue going across Kansas. Yeah, I always call my Jeep, I'm pushing a cement block down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I, I get that, I understand that. Everything on the trailer is quarter inch thick steel. If you hit something, we, we had one person who um, had an incident with their trailer where their trailer broke free from their vehicle on the highway and they had about ten thousand dollars worth of gear on it and they went and they picked the trailer up and they hooked it back up and then they went on down their way because the trailer was not damaged from a 80 miles per hour to zero mile per hour stop wow that's crazy so that's all great. of their gear was stable they continued on their trip they just yeah. had a, a minor malfunction that um, they were able to address it's it's designed to be a tank and I don't want it to fail you guys in the woods, so that's the way we designed it to be. And we're driving tanks, so you might as well pull a tank as well. Right. It's it just the, the possibilities are endless, and that was like the whole goal of it. And half the fun is trying to brainstorm through things with people as they're trying to design their trailer. It's yeah. like, hey, I want to use it for this. Okay, let me think about what I can s suggest. Oh. Right. Right. All right. Mike, I appreciate it. Uh, again, Exploring Espresso guys, um, check him out, um, Twain Trailers, uh, go to his website, you can order his trades, you can call him. Uh, his, his salesman is Ryan, mm -hmm. um, Ryan's a very nice guy to talk to, um, but check him out online and uh, we'll see you next time.